Hello, I am a woman in my mid fifties. My parents died early, and I live with my grandmother. When I was a freshman in high school, my grandmother also died, and I was left alone. My great aunt lived two bus stops away from my house, and she came to see me a couple of times a week, and dropped off food, and sometimes stayed over and cooked meals for me. It was difficult to go to an orphanage at the age of seventeen. Even if I had gone, it would have been complicated by my coming out again after only one year's stay. But my great aunt said she would take care of me, so I stayed at the house I lived with my grandmother. When my great aunt found out that I wanted to continue living in the house, I was even more grateful because she didn't take me with her on purpose. Sometimes I would visit my great aunt, and one time her son came to her house. He wasn't very happy to see me. I was not close to him, but he seemed to feel uneasy to see me visit often. Still, he didn't say anything offensive or do anything unpleasant to me. He lived close to his mother's house. My uncle's alley could be seen from my great aunt's second floor window. I once went early on a Sunday morning, and my great aunt left a note that she was going to the mountain behind the house to get some spring water. While waiting for my great aunt, I went up to the second floor and looked outside. Then I found something suspicious. I saw a man coming out of my uncle's yard, carrying a large black bag, and looking around. I knew intuitively that that person was a thief. I quickly called 911 and ran to my uncle's house. When the thief opened the door and was about to come out, I blocked the door with my whole body and prevented him from getting out. The thief swore and got angry, but then when it didn't work, he tried to climb over the wall. At that time, two police officers arrived from the police station, and as soon as the thief crossed the wall, he was caught by police officers and forced into the police car. My uncle, whose whole family went on a day trip early in the morning, was shocked to learn this. My uncle opened a bag the thief had brought out and dropped to the ground as his knees gave out. There were British pound bills, expensive jewelry, and high-end tableware, and expensive original art paintings that my uncle obtained to get ready to immigrate to England. Thank you so much, Samantha. If it weren't for this, we would have immigrated and wouldn't have any money to buy a house right away. You saved my family. No, it's nothing compared to what I owe to my great aunt. I'm so glad I saw the thief. When I said that, my uncle's family also thanked me several times. My great aunt also hugged me. She said, "Our Samantha is a lucky charm. What would have happened if Samantha hadn't come? Even when you go to England, you must not forget Samantha. Before he immigrated, he gave me money to cover my living expenses for about two months. When he immigrated, he had to spend a lot of money, and something might also happen. So even if I caught a thief," It wouldn't have been easy for him to take care of me like that. I said thank you even when I went to the airport with my great aunt. Samantha, if you work hard, good days will definitely come. Do everything diligently, and please take good care of my mother too. He left me those words and boarded the plane with his family. My great aunt had no one left except me, and just two of us were left. I made up my mind and moved into my great aunt's house. I spent my senior year in high school and my second year of college living with my great aunt. She was healthy despite her age, but eventually her body became weaker and she died of pneumonia. My uncle's family couldn't come right away because they had a situation of their own in England, so I looked for a funeral home, acted as the head of the household, and managed the funeral. My uncle, who finally arrived two days later, held my hand and shed tears. We really are indebted to you, Samantha. We will never forget this kindness. What are you saying? My great aunt was like my paternal grandmother to me. After the funeral, I heard surprising news from my uncle. My great aunt had left me some money too. Uncle, I'm sorry I can't accept this. I received so much from staying at her house. If you don't take this, we too will die later and not be able to look at my mother's face. And because you don't know, 
But do you know how many times in life you regret not having money? I think my mother probably thought of it that way. You can't ignore adults, so just accept it. How can I live while paying off all this? If you live a good, hardworking life, that's enough in exchange for paying it off. And why should you repay? We also received a lot from you. He patted my back as I cried. I saw many people around me having a hard time because of relatives who were cold toward children in the same situation as me, but I felt really lucky. At that time, I told myself not to be mean to others. If I could help anyone, I should help. That's how I decided to do it. After graduating from college, I didn't get a job and opened a popular cafe. I had the money from selling the house that my paternal grandmother left to me. I felt like it was better for me to do my own thing rather than work for someone else. The cafe was in a university town, so it was always crowded with young people. I also met my husband when I was running that cafe. My husband wanted to quit his job and open a cafe, so he came to me several times and asked me a lot of questions. I told him everything I knew. I also told him what was popular next to coffee at our cafe. It was because I wanted to help that person and do well. I wanted to help others as much as I had received. We sometimes gave scholarships to part-time workers. That's how we met and ended up getting married. I didn't know at the time that that marriage would be the time in my life that I wanted to erase the most. My husband was very friendly and kind. He was always the first to smile and talk, and was considerate and gave in to everything. Seeing that, I think I helped that person more. Even when I met his parents before marriage, he said, "Mom and Dad, Samantha is truly a great person. At a young age in a college town, she became the owner of the most popular cafe. She achieved it on her own without anyone else's help. She's really amazing. If I marry someone like that, I think everything will be fine." He only praised me to his parents. Who disapproved of my family background? I was moved by that and decided to do really well when I got married. Even after we got married, my husband was good to me. He was the first to go to the cafe, prepare, and take care of cleaning. But it soon turned out that it was all just an act to trick me. About six months after we got married, my husband started talking about independence. Even if the name of the cafe is different. I will make sure that it is the second branch store. I'm going to put that on the sign and see how much I can run it on my own. Honestly, since you're the boss, even the part-time workers see me as someone who is doing nothing here. So, who told you to quit your job so early? Considering your financial situation, you should have checked carefully whether you could open a cafe before doing so. You are all good, but I think you are a bit reckless. I decided that enough was enough. In the meantime, I gained a lot of practical experience at the cafe. If I try it once and find it difficult, can't I think about it again? He begged me like a child every day, and in the end, I had no choice but to say yes. My husband loved it so much that he signed up for a cafe spot the next day. Then he brought in everything, including interior design and kitchen appliances, right away. All this time, he was planning it all in his head. As promised, my husband put the phrase that it was the number two of our cafe on the cafe signboard. After it opened, I went back and forth between both cafes for about three months. I was concerned that my husband's cafe wouldn't do well. I couldn't stay still. Perhaps, thanks to my husband and my hard work, the cafe was stabilized sooner than expected. After almost a year. Profits also improved significantly. Now you don't have to worry anymore. From now on, just focus on your cafe. I'm also the owner of a cafe that makes a lot of money. That's right. I really didn't know it would turn out so well so quickly. These days, it's because cafes that sell these types of yogurt are popular. So we need to keep a close eye on the trend going forward. I gave him advice. But my husband was so excited that he didn't seem to listen to me properly. After that, my husband gradually changed. At some point, he started coming home late, and there were days when he ended up staying out. 
He said it was all because of the cafe, so I couldn't say anything more. This could happen if raw materials did not arrive on time or if there was a problem with the facility. However, my husband gradually stopped answering my calls, and even when I asked him to contact me, he did not respond. It was natural for him not to come to my cafe. There were more days when he didn't even come home. I occasionally went to my husband's cafe, but he was always away. No matter how many times I stopped by, I didn't notice until one day. I noticed that the sign had changed. The signboard did not even say that it was my second cafe, and the name had also changed. I thought it was strange, so I looked into it and found out that my husband had applied for the copyright for the recipes of the yogurt I made and for all the unique drink names. I tried my best to cancel it, but in the meantime, the copyright came out and I had nothing left. Perhaps because I was shaken, the number of customers at my cafe gradually decreased and even part-time workers quit. Then I realized something really shocking. My husband took the dessert maker from our cafe. The employee believed my husband's words that I agreed to their move. They went there because they were happy to hear their pay would be raised. After finding out all the facts, they felt sorry, but what could I do? And I thought the reason for the employees not telling me was because they knew it was my husband doing it behind my back. So, I didn't say a word and told them to freely make their decision. Not only my husband, but I also felt very betrayed by the staff. I kept calling to get in touch with my husband, and eventually he answered, Huh, why are you bothering me which is very annoying? What? Has there been some kind of war? Where are you now? I really need to see you, so tell me where you are. Otherwise, I too won't take this quietly. When I threatened him, my husband finally told me where he was. Amazingly, he was staying at a luxury hotel. I clearly saw my husband coming out there, arm in arm with another woman. That day, my whole body was shaking and I couldn't calm down, but I had no choice but to watch. As soon as my husband left the hotel, he moved to another place. They were trying to prevent me from coming to see them. At that hotel, my husband came in and out with a woman I had seen before, and I made up my mind and waited for them to come out and appeared in front of him. My husband didn't even bat an eye and instead looked irritated. He said, How did you get here? Are you following me now? Wow, I'm really going crazy. He grabbed my arm and said far away from women, Why are you so clueless? Don't you know that if I don't go home or answer the phone, it's over? Do I really have to tell you about them one by one? Are we casually dating? If it's okay to watch it a few times, I will think so too. Well, we're a married couple. So, I'm doing this way too. What's so great about that? Even if people live for 10 or 20 years, they still break up. Don't cling to me just because you've lived with me for a year or two. You sure are a clinging type. Shocked by what my husband said, I went to see my in-laws, but my mother-in-law went one step further and made me stand outside her front door. I heard you follow to John's residence and caused a scene. As people live, their minds can change. You also live a very shabby life. People should be neat in making and breaking ties. Mother... This isn't that kind of matter. I'm his wife, and we are not divorced, but he is seeing another woman without even coming home. Then get a divorce. If you're so lacking in understanding, you should just divorce him. This is why kids from bad families won't work out. So, if something happens, they pretend to be victims, and you treated my son so bad. That's why John, who was so kind and always took your side, would go outside and not go home. I was speechless due to my mother-in-law's ridiculous accusation, and even my father-in-law shouted. Are you going to be loud and be embarrassed for the neighborhood to find out? Hurry up and let her go and come inside. It was only then that I realized that the family had planned it together to kick me out. I realized they decided to kick me out. Even my cafe can no longer sell the yogurt and drinks I made. My husband didn't have feelings for me from the beginning. 
He needed my menu and tips and tricks from the operation of my cafe. I lost everything overnight. The divorce papers were also sent by my husband. It stated that I had mental problems of delusion of extreme jealousy, called Othello syndrome. After divorcing my husband and living numb as if my mind were somewhere else, I saw a citizen catching a pickpocket on the news. I remembered how I caught my uncle's thief when I was young. I also thought of my aunt and uncle. I decided to once again believe in my uncle's words, that if I work hard, I can achieve anything. I gathered the courage I had when I caught the thief and started again. I hadn't touched the money that my great aunt had given me until then. I found the savings that my great aunt gave me, and I worked hard to learn about coffee from someone who obtained a barista license overseas. I specialized in studying which desserts go well with which drinks. Previously, I created menus that I liked based on what came to mind, but now I have created menus based on data from a thorough market analysis. I chose a small store in a new city where there were a lot of young people, but not many cafes yet. I spent my days working at the cafe from dawn to late at night. It was a time when I was just working like crazy without knowing how time was passing. I felt unfair because of my ex-husband and in-laws, and when we split, I focused more on work. I endured these difficult times with just the thought that I would succeed in this job and live a good life to show it to them. After about a year, word of mouth spread about our cafe, and many bloggers started visiting my cafe. At the same time, there were more customers in the cafe. It had become so popular that waiting tickets were given out during crowded times. Then, someone who had studied baking abroad asked if I would like to try it with him. I was cautious because I had been betrayed before. He already had his own bakery, and it was doing quite well. I want to expand my business. Enjoy our cafe. I think it would be nice to have something like toast or sandwiches for breakfast at the cafe. Samantha, you run the cafe well and systematically, and the coffee tastes good, and the desserts are tasteful. So I want to try it together. I thoroughly researched his store and looked into its reputation. Fortunately, that person was thorough in business, and what he said to me was not empty talk. I started working with him cautiously. First of all, we decided to sell only toast in the morning. The breakfast menu was especially popular with office workers who went to work early. I received two types of sandwiches and gradually expanded the menu. At the same time, cafe sales also increased, and other desserts also sold more than before. When the cafe became a huge success, people occasionally came to me asking me to open a second branch. But every time they did, I thought of my ex-husband, so I turned them all down. I was anxious that someone might do what he did to me. Even though it had been almost six years since I divorced my husband, I still had nightmares. Around the time I was living like that, my uncle came to see me. I saw him again after 20 years had gone by, and he said he came back after working as an attorney in England. How have you been, uncle? It feels like a dream to see you again like this. When I thought about coming back, you came to my mind first. But fortunately, you haven't moved around much, so it was not hard to find you. It's none other than my daughter getting married here. Even before she came to the U.S., she said she met the guy while going back and forth. So we were surprised too. So we decided to have a wedding as soon as we arrived, and I hope you will come too. Congratulations, Uncle! That cute kid is already getting married. It's great. I will definitely attend that day. No, I'm not asking you to come as a guest. I wish we could sit together in the family seat. I think my mother will want that too. Whenever I had a hard time in England, I thought of you a lot. If you didn't find our money and valuables, I wonder what would I have done. I think it was all meant to be. I couldn't keep in touch with you because I was busy adjusting to a new life and making a living. I hope we can live like family now. I was so moved and I cried because I remember all the years I spent so far. After hearing about my ex-husband and in-laws, he asked how such people could exist. He just got furious. Don't worry, my wife and I will make sure something like that won't happen to you in the future. 
He patted me and even sent me a beautiful dress to wear before the wedding. And when the wedding day came, I wore the dress and I got my hair and makeup done at an exclusive salon and went to the wedding hall at a hotel. Because I arrived too early, my family wasn't there yet. As I was looking at the groom's family, I thought they looked a little familiar, so I looked at them. But that person was my ex-husband's friend who sang the congratulatory song at my wedding. I started shaking, so I went to the restroom, collected myself, came out, hid to one side, and watched the groom's family. Then, I realized that my ex-husband and in-laws were in the groom's waiting room. My ex-husband was wearing a groom's suit and even had flowers on his chest. My ex-mother-in-law and father-in-law were excited and smiled that their new in-laws worked as a lawyer in England. I felt dizzy and felt like I was going to throw up. And then, I grabbed my uncle, who had just arrived, and went to a quiet place and told him everything. Is it true? Is that the man you married? The man who took advantage of you and divorced you without paying a single penny of alimony? He told us he had never been in a relationship because he worked in the restaurant business. How can something like this happen? He was shaking in anger the whole time. Then he said he understood and that he would take care of it from now on. The wedding time was getting closer and almost all the guests had arrived. My ex-husband said the bride's family would not allow the groom's family to enter the bridal waiting room. He didn't know what to do in front of the ceremony hall alone. Then, without the bride, only my uncle and aunt came out, and along with them, two sturdy men appeared. Are you John? You're under immediate arrest for fraud. You have the right to remain silent and hire a lawyer. Please come with us. What kind of fraud did I do? What's going on? Mother? Father? I feel so unfair. I didn't do anything. I appeared in front of my ex-husband, who was holding on. My ex-husband and in-laws looked at me, mesmerized, as if they had seen a ghost. Are you saying you did nothing? You lied about getting divorced after committing adultery, and everything about being the owner of a restaurant company was also a lie. I heard that your cafe was in business for two more years and then closed. Did you think I didn't know that you were seducing women, extorting money from them, and going out to play golf? When I said this, my ex-mother-in-law grabbed my hair and screamed, How dare you lie, you bitch! Because this bitch cannot control my son as she wishes, she's lying! If you want to arrest someone, you should arrest and take that bitch! Would you like me to let you get the taste of the prison food also? Where is this bitch and that bitch? Do you think I will be treated as a fool as before? My uncle's family are like family to me. Are you trying to scam them? I won't put up with your scheme. I'm going to sue you for everything you did to me before, so just know that. When I shook off my ex-mother-in-law, only then did my ex-husband realize that his future in-laws and I were very close. And he knelt on the spot. I was wrong, father-in-law. I'm sorry. If I get caught like this, it's over. Please, have mercy on me. Honey, can you just give me one chance? I was really wrong. The police officers looked at my ex-husband with a shocked expression and pulled him up. When my ex-husband was taken away by the police, only then did my ex-mother-in-law plead with my uncle. As an in-law, my son may have some shortcomings, but he can make a mistake or two when he's young. Please forgive him just once. Why should I forgive him? This is the guy who tried to ruin my daughter's life. And you treated our Samantha so bad with nonsense because she was alone. Your son divorced her without even paying alimony. Please wait, we will get it all back. When he refused, my former mother-in-law and father-in-law knelt in front of him and asked him to have mercy, while others watched. After that, my ex-husband was proven guilty of marriage fraud through my testimony, along with fraud he committed against me and a number of other women, and was sentenced to prison. My uncle's daughter was shocked and had a hard time for a while, but she met a good man again and married him a few years later. Even then, I attended as her family. After that, I had no way of knowing how my ex-husband and in-laws were doing. Then, I recently heard that someone in my ex-in-laws was caught scamming old people in the countryside. I don't think people really change. 
I moved to a place closer to my uncle's house and I'm doing well. And I also found a good partner. I married the owner of the bakery that supplies sandwiches and toasts to our cafe. Now, I am living happily with my son, daughter, and husband. They say people reap what they sow. Doing a lot of good things in life, I often think that I hope my children will live a blessed life. Those who listen to my story, I wish all the happiness.